Hello everyone. Um, I think we should be live now um, and everything should be working. Um, if you could, um, uh, as usual, we'll get our little bits of housekeeping out of the way before we start. If you could let me know in the chat uh, if you can see me okay and if you can hear me okay, um, that would be really handy. Everything seems to be uh, working all right from my end. Looks like the sound is working and the video is working. So um, if you could just pop me a little message in the chat. Um, sorry, the cat's the cat's rubbing up against one of the camera tripods and I'm a bit concerned he's going to move the pallet camera. and <laughs> It's not going to work, um, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, hello, everyone who's just um, who's just popping into the chat now. Jim, thanks very much. That's great to hear. Glad everything is working. Um, Romy, hi, good to see you. Uh, hi, Carl, good to see you too. Um, I hope I haven't missed anybody. I've just been in the chat while we're all kind of getting ready. Um, looks like everybody can hear and see okay, so it looks like we're working, which is great news. Um, now, I've got to start the webinar today with a bit of a confession, uh, I'm afraid. Um, I'm extremely tired <laughs> because um, I've been painting all day and uh, it was a bit of a struggle today. It was one of those days where, you know, you start out with a plan and you think everything's going to go fine. And then halfway through, you think, no, that's just not working. I'm going to scrape it down and I'm going to start again. Um, and I've been painting peaches today. Oh, uh, yeah, this actually. Um, you can see the setup here um, and the painting here. The light's obviously different because it's nighttime in the UK now. Um, it's like nine o'clock or something like that. Um, and I've been working by natural light. The window is just over there, so the light between the setup and the, and the painting is slightly different. And you can see, hopefully, it's on the shot. Um, I didn't quite get as far as the pattern on the jug, which presents me with a bit of a problem, because um, I generally I like to paint wet into wet, and obviously tomorrow the paint on the jug is going to start to dry. Um, so we're just going to have to see what happens tomorrow when I get to, to finishing this painting off. Um, and I've been painting peaches quite a lot lately. And whilst I was painting this one today, I thought it would be a really good idea um, I thought it would be a really good idea if uh, I did something real world for you to show you exactly my process of how I go about finding and then um, uh, uh, finding the colors that I need and then picking the right tube pigments. Um, to make sure that I, I get those colours right. Um, and this is a, it's a question that's come up quite a lot on the courses I run, um, on the both the mixing course and on the mastering colour course, which takes you through from mixing to actually painting form, um, using colour to paint form is, all of this stuff is great, but how do I know which tube pigments um, to start working with when I want to match a particular colour? and I, I must admit it was kind of an oversight for me that I never thought about that because the thing is with this kind of thing, I've been working with Munsell for quite a few years now and I have a, a mental model of it in my head, if you like. Um, and uh, that makes it much easier for me to choose the right tube, pigment, uh, right tube pigments out of the gate when I start to mix a colour. But if you haven't been working with this stuff for very long or if you haven't worked with it at all, um, then that mental model isn't there. Uh, and I think part of learning colour and learning colour well is developing this kind of mental model of the colour space um, that you can, uh, the colour gamut, if you like, um, that you can reach with paint and how to navigate within it. And I'm not saying that Monsell is the only way to do that. There are obviously there are artists who don't use it, who paint perfectly successful pictures and have been doing so for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, what I think is the real strength of Munsell is that it, it's, it helps you to navigate that colour space much more efficiently and much more quickly um, uh, and waste a lot less time and get the colour more accurate. So, you know, I've given the game away. You know I'm going to be talking about Munsell again today, right, as I always do because we're doing colour, so it's going to be Munsell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this peach here, which is not actually the same one I'm painting. I think it's slightly higher chroma, but it's very similar. And I'm going to use the Monsell book to kind of judge all of these colours um, and then I'm going to mix 
so I'm going to take a selection of colours from this peach and I'm going to mix them. Um, now this is what I've been doing for the last two or three days. I think this is my third peach painting recently because I'm, uh, I've become very fascinated with peaches. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that I've never really painted them before because they're so beautiful and the colour is so fascinating um, because they have all of these, you know, the fuzz, all of these tiny little hairs which drop the chroma and change the colour and it makes them quite tricky to judge those, it makes it quite tricky to judge those colours accurately and this is, with something like this, is where Munson really helps. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over onto the, uh, onto the palette camera um, and I'll just get in and start mixing. Now, what I'm going to try and do this time uh, is to keep an eye on the chat every now and again. Um, so if you have any questions as I'm going along, uh, just pop them in the chat and I'll, I'll try and do this one as a little bit more interactive because basically I'm just going to be mixing colours. So if there's anything that you don't get whilst I'm explaining it, just pipe up in the chat, type a quick message, hopefully I'll catch it um, and I'll explain it as I'm going along. And what I'm going to try and do is explain my thought process and why I'm choosing each of the colours that I choose, relating it back to um, Monsell and hue and value and chroma. I'll go through a, a quick explanation of that. I imagine that most of the people who are here um, have been on one of these before. I've seen my blog posts about Monsell, so we'll have some idea of what hue, value and chroma are. But just in case there's anyone um, here who, who, who uh, hasn't come across it before, I'll do a quick explanation of that as well, I think. Um, so uh, let's get over to the palette. Um, and start doing some mixing. I'm going to switch over to the other camera now. Now you should still hopefully be able to hear me fine. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's working. And as far as I can see, we've got a reasonable shot of the palette there. So let me just check that. Yeah, it looks okay. I think this should do. So what I've already got up for you here, let me turn this around because it's, which would be, the, is that, I think that's the right orientation for it. Um, basically, I'm going to be, I'm going to be using, referring back to this quite a lot as I mix because I want to show you um, why I'm making the decisions that I make about the tube pigments that I choose um, and, uh, and how I um, affect them. Uh, how I modulate them to try and get towards the colours that I want. And the most important bit of all of this is actually, is this here, is the hue wheel. Um, now, hopefully you will have come across uh, uh, a method called bracketing, um, which I've explained on a few, a couple of webinars before and a few blog posts and a few videos. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through that as well. Um, but basically, this is, this is uh, Munsell is best thought of as a way of conceptualizing color. So we have the hue wheel here, which is just like a normal color wheel. Nothing very scary about that. Um, blue, um, magenta, red, orange, yellow, all the way around the hues. Um, and then we have value from dark to light. Again, pretty much self-explanatory. And the bit that some color um, systems, I suppose, could you call them? Um, like the it and colour wheel, it, it misses this part of it, um, the, the, the chroma part, from grey at one end to very bright colour at the other. Um, that's the cat there who's asking to be out. In. The funny thing is he can actually open the door himself, so I'm not going to get up. Banjo, you're going to have to sort it out yourself. I'm sorry, little fella. Or come over and sit with me here like you were earlier on. Cats, what can you do? Um, so, okay, the, the most important bit here that I'm going to be thinking of right at the start when I decide which tube pigment I need is the hue wheel. Um, but to begin with, here's my peach, okay? So let me get a couple of the pages out of the Munsell Big Book here and we'll start seeing if we can find some of these colours. Uh, now, as I say, if you don't have the Munsell Book, um, you can actually do this same process fine and I've got a couple of videos out there. I'll, I'll, when I send out the email with the replay, um, I'll... Uh... Oh, Michelle, hi. Michelle from New Zealand just popped into the chat. Hi, sorry I missed you there. Oh, and Laurie has a question. Would different people who use Munsell 
use the same pigments to mix the same Munsell colour? Laurie, that is such a good question. Now the whole point of Munsell is that you are not dependent on any particular tube pigment. For the very highest chroma colours, the brightest colours, uh, the most intense, you have very few choices on what pigments you can use and some of them are quite hard to reach, you know. And you have to use good quality paint and some manufacturers, some colours will be higher chroma than others, you know. Um, but for mid chroma and low chroma colours, there's often a lot of different ways that you can get to a target colour, you know, a, a colour that you want to mix. Um, so the advantage of Munsell is that it actually doesn't matter, and, and of the method that I'm going to show you, the way of using Munsell in order to conceptualise colour when you're mixing, it actually doesn't matter what tube pigments you're using, as long as you have a wide enough gamut within your tube pigments to mix the colour that you need. So anyone can, you can use Winsor & Newton and I can use Michael Hardin or Gamblin or whatever, um, different colours and we can, we can mix them uh, using, even using different tube pigments um, and still end up with the same colour. That's the, one of, the, one of the, the many beauties, I think, of Munsell. So let's start, I mean, having a look at this, this peach here, we've got some very, I think, close to grey, quite low value um, very reddish sort of colour here. We've got some fairly bright, brighter than the other side, yellow oranges, and we've got some yellows here. Now, one of the things that amazed me, and still amazes me actually about Munsell, what Munsell has shown me about colour, is that a lot of the colours that we see are much, much lower chroma, i.e. closer to grey, than you might think. And one of the hallmarks of beginner's painting, I'm talking about realist painting here, obviously, um, realism painting, representational painting. One of the hallmarks of beginner's painting is that the chroma is very often too high. Um, there's usually value problems as well, but you'll often find that the chroma is too high. So let's have a look, say, um, I've got... Now this is one of the pages from the Munsell Big Book. Let me try and turn this around so you can see as much of it as possible and not to get it in my main working palette which is next to this one here. So here you can see we've got dark to light um, and we've got low chroma to high chroma and these are all the same hue. So in Monster terms this is 10R which means it's a red moving slightly towards orange right hopefully that's fairly obvious and I think that probably some other colours on this peach we're going to find on this page. Now it's interesting you might think well people would often start to mix a colour and they might be, end up mixing something around here or around here, you know, for, oh, that beautiful orange of the peach, you know, you pick out that colour and you find, well, actually, you know, that colour is way, way brighter than the actual colour of the peach. So let's say, let's try something much lower in chroma. There's a couple missing, by the way, because I've got them on my palette already um, because I'm painting peaches at the moment. This is looking more like it. It's a lower value. And it's much lower chroma. You can see I picked this up. It's from about in the middle of the chroma range. And we're fairly close, I think, to some of the colours there. And you can use one of these, a little colour checker. Um, if you have the Munsell chips, you can get really close to judging a colour. I suspect that this one is a little too red and we want to go a little more orange. But in terms of the chroma, and the value, it's extremely close. So if I went to the next page in the book, um, which is this one, 2.5YR, which basically means all we've done is, by picking up this page, is we've just gone a little way around the hue wheel in this direction from red towards orange, okay? It's a little more orange, and I can pick up the same chip the value is 4, which is quite low. It's quite low down the value range and the chroma is 8. Let's pick up the same one from here. And try that against this peach. And you know what? It's close, but I think it's probably a bit too orange. It's not a huge difference between these two chips. One is slightly more red and one is slightly more orange and I think the actual colour 
of some areas of this peach is probably closer to the red one but it's somewhere in between the two so let's let's clag both of those colors down now i'm going to pick a a few colors out that i'm going to i'm going to match and i'm going to show you how i'll, I'll choose the pigments that i'm going to use so let's try let's try this bit of the peach right this is interesting let me just check the chat quickly okay we're all right no new questions yet um uh, this bit of the peach is obviously much darker and it's also it's more red and it's closer towards grey so let's see if we can find something that's going to be fairly close to that oh no here I've got caught out because I've got the next one round so now I'm moving back round the hue wheel round this way towards from orange back towards red and uh, I've actually lost these three chips here but I reckon the value, let's see if the value might be around, that one I've already got out, the value might be around here. Actually, that's about right for the value. I think that's about right. Maybe it's a little dark even. And I think the chroma, interestingly, look, we're one step away from grey here with this colour. A tiny step from grey, really. And already we're we're about right and you would never think you if you're going to mix that red you might be picking something over here or over here and you would be way too bright it's almost gray that part of the peach let's see i think i've got i think i've got the actual chip that should go there is that it i think that might be it no that's value four. Oh, i seem to have lost it which is really annoying it must be, it's probably on the floor somewhere because I've been using these so much. And this, that. Oh, here it is. I've already got it out, look. Because <laughs> I've been messing about with this earlier on. And that, I think, is very close, but I think the chroma is a bit too high. But it's, it's extremely close. Let's try it with the colour checker. Hopefully you can see that the value is about right still, but the chroma is a little bit too high and that's this chip that would ordinarily go there. And this is the one that would ordinarily go there. Let's try that one. It's too light and the chroma is too high. So really this one, way down the value range, way down here towards grey, is probably about the right colour, you know. Might be somewhere in between the two. We might want a little bit more chroma than that so let's clag those two there and we're, we're starting to we're starting to tell the story of this peach in color and it's going from very low chroma reddish orange round towards a, a, a low value as well as the value comes up it moves around more towards orange from red and the chroma comes up a little bit so let's see what else we've got these little strips of yellow at the top here now that's the kind of thing that can really easily catch you out because these are actually much lower chroma than you might think so let's have a look we'll get So the page I've got here, this is 10YR. So now we're moving around the hue wheel back over this way, round from orange towards yellow. I want you to remember that, that we're just moving around the hue wheel. because I think it's gonna be really useful to keep in mind and to help when we get there. So I'm gonna pick one, this is value seven. So we're at the top half of the value range. We're still only halfway up in chroma. And you know what? I think the chroma is too high. What do you think? The chip looks brighter, right? The hue is wrong as well, I know, but we'll look at that. And the value is too high. So let's go down here. Yeah, that's about it. In terms of, I think the value is about right. The chroma is about right. You know, you see, we're, we're way down here. If you just look at this color, this chip in isolation, 
you know, you would think, well, it's fairly grey. It's a fairly grey, greyish yellow. And you look at the colour of this on this peach standing out against that orange and red, you would think that's quite a bright and light yellow. And it's actually roughly this colour here. Hopefully you can see that clearly enough. And that's one of the ways that, that colour will, will trick you. Now I think that's actually, it might be slightly higher chroma. And I think it's more towards yellow. So again, I'm going to move around the hue wheel, right? I'm going a bit further around here. I'm at 2.5Y, which on this hue wheel is about there. Moving further around towards, that's 5Y. And that's 5Y, yellow, red, or oh, orange. I don't know why I didn't call it orange, because it's orange. So we were over here somewhere, weren't we? Let's get this one out. I've got a slightly higher value one there. Let's try this one. No, it's, the hue is wrong. The hue has gone too yellow, I think. Maybe that one. But I think the hue has gone too yellow. It's, we've, we've moved too far around the hue wheel. And it, it's the hue that I mainly want to think about when I'm thinking about how I'm going to match that colour. So I think actually it might be, I think it's actually closest to this one here. So let's plug that one there as well. If I was in, in a painting, I might mix up some of that as well. Um, or there's a slightly higher chroma variant of these because sometimes I do push the chroma a little if I want to bring some interest to a particular part of a, of a painting. Um, I don't always paint exactly the colours I see, but what I want to hopefully to demonstrate for you tonight, if I can, is, um, is given a target colour, what kind of, sorry, I'll just... Uh, messed up my muscle, but what kind of thought process I'll go through to choose the pigments that I'm going to use to hit those colours. So what I'm going to do now is, now I actually always do this when I paint. Um, if you don't have the Munsell book, you can still do this. Just thinking conceptually about value, hue and chroma. All I'm doing now is I'm sticking these down with a bit of blue tack so they don't move around when I start mixing. I've totally put that yellow chip in the wrong place, right? I'm sure you were thinking that. Should be over here. <laughs> but isn't that interesting though? You can see hopefully we're pretty much to the colours of the peach there. I'm still tempted to put a higher chromy yellow in because I just have a feeling that that's what I would do. That's definitely too high chroma though. It's definitely too high. And that's about right. Maybe we'll do another another one as well. But we'll we'll see. I don't want to I don't want to what I want to get across to you is not recipes for particular paints for t particular colors. What I want to get across to you is a is a thought process is an, an approach to mixing. But hopefully you can see that what we're starting to get here is an outline of the colour story of this peach, just in terms of local colour. Um, now, obviously, if we were actually going to be modelling the form and painting this peach, we would need some darker colours here. And an interesting thing about peaches um, that I've learned over the last couple of days, painting them last few days, is that they achieve their highest chroma in the shadow um, because the little hairs um, don't affect your perception of the colour. So um, in the, most objects are lower chroma in the shadow than they are in the lights, but not so peaches. Okay, so let's pick one of these and we'll have a go at mixing. Enough chattering, right? Let's get the paints out. What does the number before the colour mean? The number just means the hue. Um, Jim has just asked, what does the number before the colour mean? So this is 5R, okay, um, which means, if you th in Munsell terms, the 5 just means um, 
5 is in the middle of red, so that's a middle red. That's 5YR, so that's a middle yellow, red, orange. Um, that's 5Y, so that's like a middle um, yellow. Now, in the big Munsell book, between each of these hues um, is three other pages. So that's like one, and then it would be one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, and then round to this one at two, right? So you would have um, five R, then it would go to 7.5 R, um, I think, if I remember right how, it's, how it works. Um, and then it would go to 10 R, and then it would go to 2.5 YR, then 5 YR, which we have here, and so on round. So then that would go to, um, it would be 5 YR, it would be 7.5 YR, 10 YR, which we just had out, um, and then 2.5 Y, and then 5 Y, and they kind of, they go around like that. Um, I remember when I first came across Munsell and I saw the Munsell notation, and I was like, what is that? I'm, I just can't be dealing with, you know, um, I'm used to tube pigments, burnt umber and, you know, all the rose madder deep and Naples yellow and all of these lovely terms for colours, were nice romantic colours. But actually these are incredibly useful because if you say 5YR to me and if you say the value is 6 and the chroma is 8, I know exactly what colour you're talking about, you know. So it's very useful from that point of view. Um, but anyway, hopefully that's answered the question, Jim. Um, let me know if it, if it didn't. So this one, let's, I'll just tell you out of interest what this one is. It's 7.5R34. Now the 3 is the value, so it's low value. And the 4 is the chroma, so it's low chroma. So I want a colour. And I want to pick some tube pigments which, is going to, which are going to help me get close to that. And the way that I'll think about this is um, I'm going to bracket the hue. So it's not there, it's slightly around this way in terms of hue. The first thing I think about is the hue and where is it on the hue wheel? And it's just past this, go, going around this way. So it's a slightly, it's a red, but it's a, it's a slightly orangey red. Um, now what do I have that I could think of as a slightly orangey red? I want to be thinking about the value a bit too, obviously, because, uh, you know, if I pick something like, say, let's get some paints out and we can talk about them. Oh, one of my favourites, look at this. Michael Harding, naphthol red, incredibly high chroma, an orange red, you know, probably in about the right hue area, but in terms of the value, it's plainly too high, so I'm not going to be able to use that to mix that colour unless I bring something else that's much darker in with it as well. And the chroma of this, I know, is incredibly high, and I don't need this. This is like, you know, driving a Ferrari to the shops trying to, trying to mix that colour there. I just don't need it, you know, I, I can get there. Um, with something much less powerful than that. So let's say, you know, burnt umber. That's an orange yellow. In hue terms, that's about over here, you know, burnt sienna. That's an orange yellow. So in hue terms, these two colours, they're low value. So they're, you know, they're going to help me get there. And they're about over here. Now I know I want to be over there. So I know I'm going to need to have something which is more on the red side to go with those, which is going to help me pull it round. Um, now I could, interestingly, I could, actually let's do it, just out of interest I'll do it, because normally perhaps I would choose a red, you know, and I would bring it down to the value with something, but let's go pull it further round, I'll go round towards magenta, right? Because what I'm after is something about here. So I could use a colour over here and a colour over here and get somewhere close. Um, Let's see what happens. What else have I got in my paint box? Permanent magenta. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to use burnt sienna. I don't, I don't need this one. Um, I don't think burnt umber is going to, by the time I bring that all the way up to that value, it will have lost too much chroma. But let's have burnt sienna. I'll put them over here at the side. permanent magenta. Now what I'm thinking about here is not the names of these colours, I'm just thinking about the hue. This one is one side of this target colour on the hue wheel and this is the other side, right? The first, so I've chosen two colours that are either side of this. Um, the next thing I want to do is bring them up to the right value. I mean if I check that one against there, it's way too dark, right? 
Let me just check you can see that. Yeah, hopefully that's that's clear enough. Let's grab this one. Way too dark. So the first thing I've got to do is to bring these colours somewhere up around this colour and let's see what happens when I do. Um, now, this is another place that you need to start making some choices. Okay, now the obvious one when you're thinking about bringing the value of something up is white. So let's put some white down. This is titanium white, which I use a lot for uh, almost, oh, I use it almost entirely for mixing. I think there are, there are lots of good reasons for using lead white if you like it for the handling and stuff like that. Excuse me, but I, uh, I tend to use titanium. Other choices, anything lighter than this, I can use to raise the value. I could use permanent orange, right? Because that is a lighter value than that. So I could use that to raise the value of any of these, but I'd also be putting in an awful lot of chroma. This is Michael Harding, permanent orange. Oof, that's the Ferrari, you know. I'll stick it out because I might, I might use it. The other most common one you're likely to choose if you're in that end of the hue with is cadmium yellow. This is Michael Harding cadmium yellow. It's much more round towards yellow than say Windsor and Newton cadmium yellow, which is more of an orange. Um, but let's let's go through the, the steps, right? First, I'm going to bring some burnt sienna up to the value of this. Doesn't need to go all that far. And we'll start off with white and see what happens. I'm not sure actually how many of these I'm gonna I'm gonna actually I'm gonna mix in the webinar live. Um, we'll see how we do for time. The main thing, as I say, I want to get across to you is a, is a thought process, an understanding of the, the, uh, a mental model of colour that you can build in your mind. It takes time and practice to build that model. And it's growing in sophistication all the time as you work. But it's incredibly useful once you start to build it. Let's see if that's about the right value. Yeah, it's about right, but hopefully you can see in hue terms, um, it's much further around towards an orange, whereas, you know, it's more probably more in the hue area, it's probably more around here, it's an orange. So let's get our magenta, which is way over the other side. This is a bit extreme. Ordinarily, I would probably use a red for this. I just want to, I thought I'd go a bit extreme just to demonstrate. The other thing about this magenta is um, it adds quite a bit of chroma when you bring it up with white. Maybe I should do two versions of this, one with the magenta and one with the red. If I was mixing a high chroma colour, I wouldn't move this far away from that colour in, in two hue terms because I would lose too much chroma. I think that's too dark still. It's about right, it's probably a little bit too dark. So now I know that both of these colours are the same value. And I didn't need Munsell to do this, I just needed a target colour. And by the way, one of the things I would recommend that you do is, is just mix some colours. Just grab stuff, like grab peaches, grab anything, you know, book covers, stuff like that. And just don't worry about painting them, just mix the colours and match them as closely as you can. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this and I want to swing the hue of this round towards red, right? So even though I'm not actually using red, this is going to move this colour just by bringing some of this in. It's going to move it around the hue wheel. All I'm doing, the value is the same. Chroma's not much different. I'm just moving it around the hue wheel. see so just to explain again with the Munsell wheel I'm about round here with burnt sienna obviously it's much darker and it's much lower value and I want to be somewhere over here so I can pull it round with something over here so by bringing some of that into that I'm pulling it round here and I can do this with you know with a magenta because the chroma is fairly low 
needs to go further. That's probably a bit too much. Let's see what we get. Pretty close, but I think I think I'm not going to quite hit it with this mix. I think I've gone to magentary. What I may end up doing is not be is get close to the hue, but not quite be able to get the chroma. That's pretty close, but I've lost I've lost some value, so I'm gonna bring up the value a little bit. Close again, but I've I'm really close, but I've dropped chroma. So by having the magenta too far around the wheel from this one, I've got really close in hue and bang on in value, but it looks very much to me like I haven't quite hit the chroma. Unfortunately, I can't really zoom in, so I can't show you that any, any clearer. It's, it's really close. I hope that you can see it. If I hold this up, a bit further, all that's going to happen is it's going to go out of focus, I think. We're really close, but I think we dropped a little bit too much chroma because those colours were too far apart, all right? But I, st I still want to swing it round towards red, so let's try something else. I want it to be fairly low value. I want it to be more red. So I've got a number of options here. I mean, I could actually mix something with a, um, I could use say this high chroma red and I could, I could bring that value down with the burnt sienna and end up with something which is more red, but it would probably still be a bit too orange. So I'm gonna see if I can find, here's a good one. This is Winsor & Newton and it's cadmium red deep, which just means it's fairly low value, okay? Let's squidge that on there. I think I'm going to have to mix up some more of my burnt sienna as well. And bring that up to the right value again. Now the thing is, this is the way that I'm demonstrating this. It's a, it's really painstaking, and you you know, this is just one colour that I'm mixing. When I'm actually on the palette and working and painting, um, I use this. I use an abbreviated version of this, if you like, because I, I know I, I would get there much quicker. I wouldn't have messed about with the with the magenta. I wanted to see out of interest if I could if I could hit it, and I didn't quite because the chroma. I took it across there, but the chroma dropped too much. This let's check the value of this red. This red is going to be higher than we actually need. It's a higher value. It's obviously much higher chroma. but it's also a higher value. Oh, I've got a question. Not sure if you, a couple of questions. Not sure if you mentioned this already, but does this apply to watercolor as well as oil? Um, I don't paint watercolor. I think some of it will apply, but the problem is that watercolor is transparent um, and this is, method is really for opaque paint. I think broadly speaking, some of the concepts will apply, but this method won't work with watercolor because I think the pigments will behave very differently. Um, in in that case, um, so anyway, I need to I need to bring the value of this down a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna I need to bring the value of this down so it's the same value as this, and I'm gonna use the burnt sienna to do that because I know it's lower value than this, and I'm happy for this to swing a little bit round, and because it's still gonna stay on the red side. So remember what I need is two colours, one on one side of the hue wheel, one on the other side and of the same value. That looks about the right value to me. 
the chroma is much higher but the value looks about right so again we'll get a bit of this this one is is i suspect will be more successful because i'm not going to lose chroma like i did on the last one i'm probably going to end up with too much chroma yeah i think the hue is about right it's maybe a little bit orangey still a bit more red in I'm going to have to drop the chroma of that one now I could actually what I can probably do now that I'm in this position there's, there's two ways I can drop the chroma um, let me show you this I'm going to show you a quick and dirty version of, of this you can do it with a with a gray this is not actually a neutral that I'm going to mix here because it's it's black and white which is not not strictly a neutral neutral zone this this is more blue in terms of hue get it to about the right value I suspect that's a bit too light that's about right a bit a bit light Take some of that, bring the value down with a little bit of that. Getting pretty close now, I think. The value might be dropping a little, but I, I may have one of my mixes out because I'm doing this in a fairly quick and dirty way. Oh, actually, I'm still too. Yeah, the value's gone down a bit and I think I'm too, might be too orange still. I think that's, that's pretty much there, slightly orange. I know it's kind of difficult to, you really, you need to be in the room with me to be able to zoom your, <laughs> your face right up to that chip to see the match bringing it a little bit more red in back into it now and we pretty much we pretty much nailed the color there um, and that's you know that's one of the colors of this of this peach so this one didn't work out so well um, because I pulled it a little bit too far um, uh, the, the hue of this color was too far around the hue with it was too far away so it's kind of like when I mix between those it kind of goes straight across there and I didn't get as much chroma as I needed so I did need something that was just a little bit this side but so if I wanted to mix um, this color here this kind of low chroma orangey red basically I'd be using burnt sienna which I would bring up with white which gives me this color here then I'd be using cadmium red deep which I brought down to the right value again with burnt sienna. So I basically have, I've hit it with um, three colors, but the chroma was high. So then I dropped the chroma. Um, the other thing I could probably get away with if I wanted to, to drop the chroma of that, it will swing the hue a little as well, is to use a bit of that mix. And that will probably get me really close because it went a little bit too far around toward magenta anyway. Just to show you that there are different ways to reach the same color that should be pretty much the same color although it's a quick and dirty mix as as that they're really close you know but they're obviously they're made with different paints this one's got magenta in it and this one has got has got red in it um kate says why does the colors being far apart contribute to lowering the chroma there's a good reason for that um, and that's also a really good question you will have doubtless heard about neutralizing chroma through um, complement mixing. So, you know, if you've got a color over here and you want to reduce the, the chroma, um, what a lot of people will do is say, well, mix in some blue green and you will drop the chroma and you will, but you'll also, the hue will go all over the place. So it's a very unreliable way to do it. If you want to bring down the chroma of uh, an orange yellow, then you can use a slightly greenish blue and it will bring down the chroma and vice versa but it will also play merry hell with the uh, chroma and with the hue 
Um, so it's not such a, a useful way to do it. But that's why the further away these colours get from each other around the hue wheel, the more likely they are to drop the chroma. So you really want them, if, especially if you're trying to mix a high chroma colour that's between these two, say, you would have to use your highest chroma orange and your highest chroma red to do it. Because if you try using anything else, it will swing the hue, but it will also drop the chroma. It might affect the value as well, but mostly it will drop the chroma. So the further they are away from each other, the more the chroma will drop. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So you kind of, when you're bracketing like this, you really want your colours to be um, to be fairly close to each other. Are low chroma colours easier to mix than high chroma colours? Yes, they absolutely are. And it's mostly because there's a lot of different ways um, that you can achieve them. Um, mixing high chroma colours is hard because uh, your, you may not, your tube pigment, pigments might not go uh, the chroma might not go high enough for you to mix them, for one thing. On the on the colour course, the mi colour mixing course that I run, um, you can get a couple of the colours. What we do is we, one of the things, one of the exercises is to try and mix all of these colours. You know, actually I think we only we only do those on this side of the wheel. Um, but a couple of people have, have done all of them. And some of them are very difficult to get. The red is difficult to get right up there the yellow is difficult to get right um, 5gy is a problem um, a lot of people get the chroma and they get the value but they can't get the hue but the red i struggle to get the red and that is a difficult one uh, high chroma reds that naphthol red that i showed you earlier on that was the one that finally got reds high chroma reds for me if, when i was painting red roses and trying to get um, uh, high chroma in the shadows the way that i got it in the end was using that and mixing it with quinacridone rose, also from Michael Harding, also quite high chroma, not as high, but still quite high. Um, this one, that's just a lower chroma of, of the same thing. Oh, opportunity missed. I should have tried the magenta color against that and it probably would have been really close. Sorry, missed that one. Let's try, we do another one. Um, let's go a bit further around. This one's slightly higher value, slightly higher chroma. And Munsell would tell us that this is 2.5 YR, this colour here. So we're going around the hue wheel. So we were, the colour we've just mixed was closer to red. And this colour here in terms of hue is closer to orange. So let's see my thought process. If I'm, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm thinking about the hue. And I know I want an orange. I know the chroma is not that high, but it's not as low as this one here. So I'm going to need some chroma. Um, again, I'm going to I'm going to have to get some more out, but I'm going to be thinking about burnt sienna because I know it's roughly in the right hue area, and I know it's it's going to need bringing up in value. But if I just bring that up in value with white, let me demonstrate this for you just to show you what happens if I do that. I think, well, you know, I can bring it up with white, right? Yes, I can. I can bring it up to the right value just with white. But what happens when I do? I lose a lot of chroma. I mean, that's nowhere near the chroma it's much much grayer um, so I've got a bit of a problem there I could still use that and I would need to mix in um, something else which is going to bring the chroma up but I'd be actually much better off bringing the value of this burnt sienna up with something of a higher chroma so I want a higher chroma and I want a higher value right but I still want it to be an orange so I'm going to go here and what I sometimes do is I'll bring up a, a colour so far in value. I've got a bit too much sienna there, really. Uh, mostly because I don't want to be wasting too much of my expensive orange. I'll bring a, a colour up so far in value with a high chroma colour, and then you can sometimes bring it the rest of the way with white if you've overshot the chroma. Let me get some more permanent orange out. Going to have to get a new tube of this anyway soon. I've been going through a lot of this with the peaches, actually. 
let's see what it takes to bring it up to the right value. We might overshoot the chroma as well, not quite there. Now this, the orange isn't going to bring it much higher in value now. Or at least because I'm getting closer to the value of the orange, I'm going to have to put more and more orange in. And I, this is looking a bit too red to me as well. So let's bring it up some more with yellow. I want to keep the chroma. I don't want to lose too much chroma. Let's see what happens if I bring some yellow into it. I've overshot the chroma by a long way. Well, by, by a... A, a sizable amount. So the cat is requiring my attention. Hello little fella. Interesting, my value is right. I suspect that my hue is right. But my chroma is low. Um, and I, I'm not bracketing this. It, just because that's the way it turned out. This happens sometimes. Actually, in the videos for, for uh, the mixing course, there was one of them where I, I set out to make a bracketing colour like I did here, and I ended up nailing the colour just on, <laughs> on the first try. And that can happen sometimes too. Um, but hopefully that's something interesting about this, is that um, it's perhaps not too obvious what I've used there to bring up the value. I mean, everything that I've used is in the yellow-orange kind of area. And that's what this the hue is here. Um, I actually think that that hue is about right, but I would need to drop the chroma, which, you know, I can do that right with a little bit of grey if I want to. But it has to be the same value. That's the key. It's, you've got to make sure it's the same value. And I'm very actually something that's worth pointing out is that what you don't see me do when I, I think the palette probably goes, the, the palette knife goes off camera when I do that. But in between, before I pick any color up from over here, I always wipe my knife so that I don't pollute the colors, you know. It's too light. The value is too high. Um, oh, a couple of questions. Uh, when you select pigments to mix and match the target Monsell chips, how critical is it to know each pigment bias? I'm not sure what you mean by bias. Um, yeah, I really don't know what you mean by bias, I'm afraid, so I find that a difficult question to answer. Um, all I need to know is that's about the right value. All I need to know is the hue in relation to the color that I'm after. And then I need to think about the value and what I need to bring it up or down to get close to what I want. Let's bring a little bit of this out. I'm losing, this does happen sometimes when you, especially with because well, I'm not using a proper grey, I'm actually, I'm swinging the hue and it's a bit, I'm not using a proper neutral, I should be using a proper neutral really, but you know, this is kind of a slightly quick and dirty. I want to show you the, 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 the concept and the way you can think about it. I've actually dropped too much chroma. So let's bring a bit of that back. I'm thinking about bias <laughs> I'm not sure what it means I'm trying to it's not a phrase I've come across before color bias so I'm not sure what it means but you could say I think I suspect it's probably hue you're talking about and if it's hue you're talking about then yeah it's absolutely it's critical you know the first decisions are made for me based on hue yeah, I pretty much nailed that color I had to bring the value back up a bit because mixing in that gray either the gray was the wrong value which is most likely um, or sometimes they do shift a little bit, so you have to do a little bit of adjustment. But this one, you know, I've got there with burnt sienna, and then I used these two. I brought the value up a little bit with orange and then with yellow, 
and then it just by luck it happened that the hue was pretty much right so then I just brought the chroma down a little bit um, but again I, I was starting with something that I wanted in the right hue range and then bringing it to the value that I want and then and then editing from there and if you're lucky like I was then and it happens to be just in the right value then great uh, sorry in, uh, you, you pretty much nail the color then great um, oh, another question here um, can one mix say a cad red and a cad yellow to reach a high chroma orange you totally can but it's never going to be as high chroma as a dedicated single pigment like that at the very high chromas you want a single pigment color the highest possible chromas that you can reach that's incredibly bright orange that um, what if you're trying to paint a tangerine or something that's Michael Harding permanent orange will get you there in the light or at least it'll get you very close anyway in the lights um, so if I mixed um, if I got rid of that and instead of that I had a cadmium red and I mixed that with a cadmium yellow I could definitely get that hue but and I could get that value as well but I wouldn't get the chroma at the very highest ones you're better off with very highest chromas you're better off with single pigments um, what is a proper grey as opposed to mixing does one buy a branded neutral grey I'll link when I send out the link with the with the replay for this I'll put a link in um, for how to mix a monsoon neutral it's basically you mix black and white to the value you want as I've got here and then you mix you I use burnt umber um, something to this is slightly blue in terms of hue so you need to bring that you need to neutralize that blue swing the hue basically from blue round towards orange and that gets you closer to a to a neutral in a sense actually it's kind of complement mixing but that's how you would do it um, is neutral gray a necessary color on your palette how important it is, is it to you to me yeah absolutely um, I use it an awful lot if I need to bring the chroma down of something I tend to use grays um, I will um, I will often use a lower chroma version of the color if the hue is close like if a good way to bring down the chroma of this might have been to use this say because the hue is is really close you know um, so let's if I get a little bit of that out and I mix it with some of that the hue won't change too much but the chroma will go down um, and it will swing the hue and the value much less than doing it that way so I've got three colors there pretty much all of the same hue all of the same value but of different chromas so that that would be a really useful string if I was painting an object you know let's have a go at one more we'll do we'll do one more right I'll do the yellow one ah, let's just get rid of these you can go through a lot of paint you know <laughs> just mixing colors like this but I, I actually do it just as a as a way to to develop my uh, the, you know the mental kind of representation I was talking about earlier of color space mixing color just really helps you develop that and in a sense you could say it saves you color because you're going to waste less color by getting colors wrong um, Well, a question here been working through the monster student book mixing all sorts of colors brilliant good for you uh, often I think I've gotten to a place where I've missed my target and it seems like I'll never get the color I'm after so I start again is that a normal part of the learning process yeah totally totally um, it's I'm, I'm trying to show you my thought process here but but it's like how can I uh, explain this um, I don't consider myself an absolute master of color mixing but I know that I'm a, an awful lot better at it than I used to be um, and I'm pretty confident if you give me any color and it's within the range of paint I'll be able to mix it within about 15 minutes you know <laughs> as long as it's within the range of the tube pigments that I've got um, sometimes quicker uh, it's and it's because I've, I've over years of working with this way of looking at color with these three um, aspects of color hue value and chroma I've built up a, a mental model um, of uh, I, I have knowledge about all of my tube pigments um, I know roughly where they are on the value 
uh, scale. I know roughly where they are in the hue scale, so it, be it becomes quicker for me to mix. There's a really interesting book called Peak um, by Anders Ericsson, and it's about practicing. And there's an interesting chapter about chess masters, and he brings up the the the. I'm not saying that I'm a color master at all, color mixing master, but he brings up. Uh, not on the level of chess masters, but he, he brings uh, up an, an example of how chess masters can glance at a board um, and they can really quickly um, judge what the next move could be. In seconds, they can, um, they can one, they can memorize the, the position of the pieces and they can judge very quickly what the next move should be. Um, if you show them, and, and people used to think it was because they had incredible memories, right? So you could show someone a chess board and if they were a, a novice, you take the chessboard away and give them a, a blank board and uh, with no pieces on it and ask them to replace all of the pieces. A novice couldn't do it, but a chess master could do it. But here's the key. The chess master could only do it if it was an actual game. If the pieces are placed randomly, a chess master is no better at doing it than a novice. It's not memory. It's because they've got a mental representation of all the different moves and the, all the ways that things can go in chess. So they look at a chessboard and they see a bunch of moves, you know, they see a position. Um, everything makes sense to them because they have all of this background knowledge. Um, and what I, I guess the main message that I'm trying to get across with this is um, what I'm trying to show you is a way that you can develop that mental representation for yourself much more quickly than just through trial and error, um, which can take you forever and you frankly might not ever get there, you know. Um, Keep the unused painters mud. No, not me. No, never. I don't want mud on my palette. I want exactly the. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to. I hope you're not offended by this, but um, I, I don't. I want exactly the colours that I want. Um, I, I don't want something, you know, um, just to try out and see if it works. I, I want the colours that I want, um, and I, I, old paint um, that hasn't worked out that I'm not using. I, I will chuck. Actually, here's something. I'll show you actually when I've finished having a go at this last colour here um, and we'll see. So here, in the, I'm going to go after this one, right? So in hue terms, I'm not quite all the way around here. I'm not quite all the way around to this bright yellow and I'm not over here. I'm closer to the yellow than I am to the orange, but it's slightly orangey. It's middle chroma and slightly above um, middle value. So I'm probably going to be looking at using some of this in there somewhere. But I also want it to be, it's going to need to be slightly more round towards orange. Um, that's probably going to be a little bit too orangey. Uh, so if I'm thinking about colours that I've got that are on that yellow end, yellow orange end of the, of the scale, raw umber is one, right? Raw umber is... I mean, I know that all paints have different properties and handling qualities and people use them for different reasons. But raw umber, in hue terms, is about over here. It's low chroma. Um, it's still a yellow orange, um, but it's, mo it's a bit more round towards yellow. If I bring that up, it's obviously, it's very low chroma. So if I brought that up with if I just bring that up, actually I'll just demonstrate it. If I if I bring this up, that's probably too much white because raw raw umber is uh, not a very strong tinter. You can see how it, how grey this looks compared to the colour I'm after. I might have overshot the values. I think the value is a little low still actually, but you can see, you know, if I, if I, raw umber is, is probably about the right hue, but if I bring it, I've got to bring it so far up, up the value range. If I bring it up with white, I've just lost way too much chroma. I can't, I can't get there with that color. It's still a bit too dark, but I can't get there with that color. So let's try something else, right? I'll try bringing it up with yellow and see what I get with cadmium yellow. Again, what I'm, I'm trying to get across is a, is a thought process, you know. It's got a lot more chroma, but it's kind of green, right? So 
so it's kind of gone it's moving around here on the hue wheel too far round the value is still too low and I'm going to bring it up quickly with a bit of white to about the right value too low still about the right value now but it's way too green right the chroma is not too bad so if I'm over here in hue terms and I want to be about here then I need something around here so I, I want an orange um, I don't want to lose too much chroma if I, I can start with something like I mean if I put that in it um, it's probably about the right value but in terms of it's maybe a bit dark. I'd, I'd actually, I'd, for interest's sake, let's try that. It's really high chroma, right? It's way too high. But I'm probably going to have to, I'm going to, in value terms, it's too low. High chroma colours are quite hard to judge the value on. It's, it's easy to get confused between chroma and value. I mean, that's like, you know, it's, it's positively lurid compared to the colour I'm after. That's probably about the right value. So let's just see, for interest's sake, if I could take a little bit of this greenish colour, a little bit of this really high chroma orange, and see how far I can swing the hue and what happens. For a start, I've got that. The chroma is going to end up way too high, but I've also I've got the value wrong, I think. It's really hard to judge value on high chroma colours. the value of one of them is a way out and I've probably gone to orange I think it's the value of that one but it looks like I'm in the right hue range now but my value is way too low I think it's probably this one I haven't really judged it properly bringing it up to value I can see that the hue is too orange Again, I'm just all I'm doing is it doesn't really matter what if it's a mid chroma color, it's not a really high chroma color. There are lots of different ways of getting there, and you can just pull a color around in, in the color space until you, you get it where it needs to go. That's about the right value, but everything that you do affects it in one way or the other. But the, the main thing I think to keep in mind is that. Is to make sure that your, your value is right. I'm actually going to run out of that yellow before I get close enough to this one. I think my value is still dropping. The chroma is too high. The hue is too far towards orange. It's incredibly powerful, this orange I've got over here. I've used up all of that. Let's get a little bit more of that together so I can. It's effectively, I mean, what I'm doing really is I'm, I'm playing with those three elements of colour. Mostly I'm, I'm playing with hue, um, but a little bit with chroma as well. And I'm trying to make sure that given a, a target colour, that I keep my value constant. That's going to be too high chroma. But high, high chroma colours swing the hue more, uh, more strongly. I think the value is about right. So I'm going to try and swing the hue back towards yellow. So I'm in the right hue range. I've 
given myself a kind of a difficult challenge here because I've used that very high chroma orange. Um, if I was actually mixing this and I was doing a painting, I'd be more likely to start with, with burnt sienna because I know I want orange and then bring the value up with the orange and then some white. So I don't lose to the orange, so I don't lose too much chroma and then the white to bring the value up the rest of the way. But this is kind of an interesting experiment to see if I can do it with a very high chroma. We're actually really close now. We're really close to the colour, but our chroma is a bit too high. And actually, I have something very useful that I can use here. Let's just make sure that I'm not going to spoil the value. I'm running out of space here for my little colour dabs. I'm going to have to wipe this chip off. Too dark. So I, I know I'm about right. This colour, it's about right, I think, in hue. But the chroma is too high. The value is right. That's about right. But the chroma is too high. So raw umber, this is raw umber and white, remember? Um, raw umber and white is about in the same hue area as this, just much lower chroma. Oops, sorry, just knocked the mic. Hopefully that's, it's still, still working all right. Um, so if I take a little bit of this color, which is what I've got here, too high chroma, bring in a little bit of this. It's like a much lower chroma version of the same color. Should be closer. Maybe too yellow. It's too yellow. The chroma is about right. Tiny bit of orange. Swing the chroma, uh, swing the hue, sorry, back towards orange. It's moving, it needs to go a little bit further. Oh. Apologies, I actually knocked the mic off then. <laughs> I'm just kind of edging this around the hue wheel now, back, back towards orange. My value is too low, so I'm going to bring it up. And I'm not going to bring it up with any anything high chroma because I, I can see already that, that the chroma is probably a little high too. So I'll put a little bit of white in it to bring the value up to where it should be because I don't want to add chroma. This will actually drop a bit of chroma. Uh, I think I'm there. Yeah. Could probably get slightly better with a bit more messing about. But for that one, I mean, I've basically, what have I used? I've used, um, I've gone a, a circuitous route here to kind of hopefully to demonstrate some stuff, but I've used um, burnt umber and white, burnt umber and cadmium yellow, and permanent orange, which is like incredibly high chroma and white. Uh, and then out of those three, I've managed to pull this color with a little bit of messing about with the value with, with a bit of white as well. I've managed to pull it around to where I need it to be. And you might say that this is, I mean, this is kind of a, a fairly muddyish colour. You, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think just looking at that peach that that's the right colour. But I promise you, if I put that into a painting, it would be about right. I might modulate it a little bit. Once I had a look at the painting, I might decide that I want to change it a little bit. But I know that I've got something like the right colour. Now let me show you this just quickly. Now I've got this painting on the, on the easel at the moment that you, you hopefully could see enough of earlier on. Um, this is the, the, um, the palette that I've been working with today. Uh, so I've got a lot of these, I've got all my, all my orange and yellow low chroma colours around here. This is black over here. Um, this is a different peach, so the colours are slightly different, but they're, they're still very similar and I'm using magenta and I'm using 
I've got permanent red here. I've got a little bit of higher chroma red, orange and yellow. And I've mixed these colours here, around here. And I've actually used, these are the colours that I've used to paint the peach. But they're still all very low chroma. These colours are actually lower chroma than, than the ones we were just mixing there. And what I sometimes do when I paint is I pre-mix all of these colours. For this one I didn't, I did a lot of it on the fly. These colours here are the colours of the jug. And in some places where there's reflected light from the peach, these colours actually go as high chroma as the colours of the peach themselves. Um, but hopefully you can see that when I'm actually, I mean it depends, sometimes I'm, I'm really really controlled and sometimes I'm a little bit more on the fly like this. And you know, like I said earlier on, I ran into some trouble with this painting and it took me longer than I thought it was going to take to do it. Let me switch back to the main camera. Yeah, we're back. And, and uh, maybe that's why, because <laughs> I was a bit less strict with my mixing today. Um, oh, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, Oh, hello, someone's just turned up. Sorry, we, we are kind of coming to the end now. Um, but I'll be sending out, when I send out the, re, the link to the replay of this, because it's being recorded on YouTube, when I send out the link to the replay, I'll put in some hopefully useful links to various bits of videos um, that I've got on, on some elements of this that you'll be able to see as well. Mixing paint seems to be part instinct, part experience, and part amazing eye physics. <laughs> yeah. um, I would say instinct is an interesting word to use. It's not one that I would necessarily disagree with, except that I think instinct and experience in that, in that sense are, are kind of the same thing. Um, you can arrive at a conclusion more quickly if you have great depth of experience in any particular field. Um, if you're a novice at it, it's, going to, it's probably going to take you longer to arrive at the, at the, at the place you want to be. Um, and a lot of that mental processing that happens may not be conscious because it's thought patterns that you're so used to, they, they don't really get into your conscious mind. You just think, yeah, Ben, Sienna, and I want some of that. I want to bring it up with this. Don't drop the chroma, so I won't use this. I'll use that. You know, a lot of that can happen. Um, and I think for, for very good painters who learn through trial and error over many years, that's what they do. And a lot of the reason they find it difficult to teach colour is because um, a lot of that decision-making process has, has become un unconscious. So from that point of view, I think instinct and experience are kind of the same thing. You could say it's instinct, um, but really it, it is experience. It's just not happening. The decisions aren't always happening at the, at the conscious level. That's what I think anyway. Um, an amazing eye physics. Now that's an interesting one. Again, that's experience because I've no doubt that for me, my sensitivity to the sensitivity of my perception, the bit, and that's the bit that happens in my brain, not in my eyes, um, to value and to chroma and to hue has definitely um, um, uh, grown over the years that I've been messing with colour. Um, it does take time, uh, but, it, but it, it does come. There are th uh, things that I would find difficult to judge a few years ago that I find much easier to judge now, like the hue of very low chroma colours. That comes with experience too. Um, ever used clove oil to preserve the mixes? No, clove oil. I've heard of that. I've never used it though. You know what I do? If I want, like I've got a bunch of colours mixed here. I'm going to be doing some more painting on this tomorrow. And, you know, on this palette here. Oh, I just stuck my finger in the paint <laughs> on this palette here. Um, I've got some colours mixed for the jog. And I'm going to need them tomorrow because I've got to do the pattern. And I like to paint wet into wet. Uh, otherwise, my, my edges will be hard and, and, it, and they won't look right. Um, so uh, I get little bits of cling film and I scoop up the paint off the palette, stick it in the cling film, twist it round and then the next day you just puncture it with the edge of your palette knife, squeeze it out and bang, it's as good as new, you know, you can keep it for a little while like that. Uh, I mean if clove oil works for you fine, I'd, generally for me I tend to try and put as little extra things as I can in my paint, you know, at the moment I mostly use an alkyd resin medium. 
um, which seems to work pretty well and I just use that uh, and nothing else you know um, would you select and lay out the Munsell chips on the palette before mixing and just mix on the fly? Let me show you the palette again. Munsell chips. <laughs> I absolutely, I, I do. You know, I mean, I've got the big book, obviously. I got it years ago. And uh, it's been the single um, most effective investment I've ever made uh, in in anything that I've, that I've done it cost me I mean it's ridiculously expensive now it's like a thousand dollars or something I think I paid about three or four hundred quid for mine um, which would be about six hundred dollars now um, I would not understand colour to the extent that I do now without that book there's there's no two ways about it it, it unlocked my palette um, it unlocked colour for me um, it's not like you just get the book and, and you're there you know you've got to actually use it um, but yeah, I, 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 I still use it all the time. Um, these days more, I deviate from it sometimes. I, uh, what I mean is I deviate from the colours that I see sometimes. For a long time, I just, I tried to match the colours I saw as closely as I possibly could. And that in itself is quite difficult. But now I tend to look more at the design of the thing um, and what I want to bring out and what I want to, to push back. You can do that with edges as well. I mean, there's so much going on in painting that you have to try and stay aware of. It's so easy to drop the ball on any one, one thing, you know, even if you get something else right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I still do that now. Um, is speed important to you in painting? What an interesting question. Actually, yes, but you know why? It, it's not anything to do with the painting itself. Um, I tried to get this painting finished today um, because uh, if you follow my blog, as you may know, I, I uh, it's funny because in my life I, I started off as, I used to be a full-time artist a long time ago, kind of more commercial stuff like, I used to paint big murals in uh, theme pubs and motorway service stations. And I got that work because before then I was working as a street artist. I used to chalk old master copies on the streets, on the pavements, you know, Tiepolo, uh, Caravaggio, um, Leonardo, you know, mostly the famous ones, but I, I, and Tiepolo isn't well known, but they're ceiling paintings, so they just made fantastic big um, pavement drawings, you know, and I used to do that with pastels. It taught me an awful lot, I think, actually. Um, and then I started doing um, murals. And then I kind of, um, my life went, uh, kind of got knocked sideways and I, I ended up doing other stuff for a while music, uh, programming and then I got into marketing blah 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 and now I'm back painting again and I'm I, the way that I make my living part of it is by it's painting these little paintings and then auctioning them online um, so I'm not in any galleries you know I'm, I'm trying to it's an, an experiment if you like in, in making a different making a living as an artist a different way outside of the art world you know because, and I think it's possible now um, but it means that I mean that there are there are considerations outside of painting if I spend too long on a painting um, and someone buys it for $150 um, and it takes me four days to do um, then it stands to reason that eventually I'm going to hit a point where my kids don't eat um, so yes I mean speed is important and actually um, that is another advantage of, of colour this way. It may look like, I mean, it took me quite a long time to mix those colours because I was going down some interesting side roads, hopefully, to try and to show you how I'm thinking about colour in Munsell terms in those three aspects of colour. Um, but it actually, I think it gets you there um, a lot quicker than, than by trial and error. Um, so, yeah, speed does matter to me. There are times when I'll just... I, I won't rush a painting like this one... Uh, when I came to the to finishing the the modelling of the jug and the peaches, I I knew. I, I didn't want to just stab it out quickly and say that's good enough. I find the more that I paint, the the less that I can make myself do that. Um, and it you know there's a, there's a, a tension there because you have to make a living at the end of the day. You can't spend forever, um, finishing a painting if you don't get a few thousand dollars for it. If you sell it in a gallery for a few few thousand dollars, then yeah, you can spend a month on it, or something. Um, whatever but if if you don't um, and I kind of prefer this way that I'm trying to do it now because I, I really like independence uh, then um, yeah you know that's why I, I work small um, because 
bigger paintings would take too long to do. But I mean, who knows? It may change. Um, I don't know if that was the kind of perspective you were asking that question from about speed in painting. Um, I think this kind of work, it's difficult because when you're actually doing it, you have to let go of, of time to do it well. You've got, to, you've got to lose awareness of time because if you're constantly thinking about trying to get it done by a deadline, you, for me anyway, I find out I'll just mess it up, you know. Sorry, glasses back on so I can read the chat. Um, while watching our Google photos of peaches and can't believe the difference in how bright they are in comparison to the real peach in your video. Yeah, well, I've got, um, I mean, if they're photos of peaches, they've probably been punched up to the nines. And when I take pictures with my camera, um, the Canon that I use, it, it, it massively brings up the chroma. I'm under colour corrected lights here um, and the peaches that I've got here are fairly a pretty low chroma anyway. Um, what I would advise you to do, a really interesting experiment, try some of this stuff, get a peach from a supermarket, um, get an acetate trip strip, just a little piece of acetate, clear acetate or some card or something, do some experimental mixes, What you guess what you think those colours are, and then put them on a little bit of card or acetate and hold it up against the peach and see how close you came, and then adjust it, pull it around the colour space, that colour, until you get it right, and then see, I bet you it's a lot greyer than you thought it was. Um, most colours are much lower chroma than we think they are. Um, do you tube mixed paint to save time? In bigger projects. Um, I don't really do any bigger projects at the moment but yeah I would, I would if that was the case for sure um, and even with little ones like this I mix more than I need and then if there's any uh, left over and I haven't finished the painting at that point then I'll, I'll save it you know bits of cling film. Um, okay I thought this might be a, a quite a quick webinar today and I've, I've overshot again like I always do. Um, thanks so much for staying to the